This is everything that comes in the box with the Dietchworks fuel pump relay kit. We got the harness itself with the relay. We got instructions slash wiring diagram and the box itself, of course. We'll get this out of here. This is really all we're going to be needing today. My name is Booster John and this is my 1993 Honda Civic EG hatchback with a fully built B-Series motor in it. What I'm gonna be showing you guys today is something that can be used on pretty much any car. I'm 99% I'm sure this will work with almost any car out there, but we're gonna be doing a fuel pump hardwire or a fuel pump relay kit on my B-Series EG hatch because I'm still running stock wiring. We're running a Walboro 450 fuel pump. That's one of these big boys. And my stock wiring is starting to tap out. We just made 567 wheel horsepower in this car in the stock wiring, and we were limited on fuel and boost. So we're gonna fix one of those problems today by getting the car a little bit more fuel. Enough about me, let's get into the install because I just wanna show you guys how to do it. There are like no great videos on YouTube on how to do this. There's like one that I saw, but I wanna make this as detailed and clear as possible. No fluff in this video starting now. Before we go over the wiring and what's going on over there, I just wanna give you guys a quick glance at the instruction manual. If you guys feel like pausing it and taking a look here, it does include a list of everything that's included in the kit if you wanted to try to make this whole kit yourself. And it does have kind of instructions or like a wiring diagram and pin out of where things go. We will revisit this shortly. All right guys, here it is all laid out on the floor. I'm gonna go ahead and just go through this really quickly. Electrical stuff can be very confusing. Here's what we got. This is the relay itself. A relay is basically an electrical switch that turns on and off on its own. The idea here is that we want power to flow from the battery. So this will go to battery positive, battery positive. So that's the red one on the battery, right? So I'm literally just going to attach it here to the battery, run it through the firewall. We're gonna run it all the way back to the pump where this will be. This will be in the back of the car. Black wire, let's just get this out of the way now. Black wire will get grounded, meaning, you know, just attach this to your chassis somewhere where it's clean and you have bare metal. So you have a good ground. Those two are taken care of. Those two are easy to understand. We got power coming from the battery and we have a ground for the relay, okay? Blue and yellow. Yellow is gonna go to your fuel pump positive connection. So the red wire or the positive connection on your fuel pump, it's gonna go directly to it. The idea here is that we want the positive electricity from the battery to flow through the red wire, through the relay, through the yellow wire, and to the pump. So like, zoop, right? That's the path that we wanted to take. Through the relay, into the yellow wire, to the pump. In order for that to happen, we need something to tell the relay to close the circuit. This relay is normally open, meaning your fuel pump is off unless something is telling this relay to turn it on or to close the relay. By having the relay grounded, we have ground. Now all we need is something to provide power to the relay itself. It's already grounded, so this is going to go to our fuel pump signal wire. We can just splice this straight into the stock signal wire on the chassis. That wire does not flow electricity for the fuel pump. That's what the red wire is gonna be doing. The signal wire purely just turns the relay on, turns the relay off. This will go to our stock wiring harness, our stock chassis harness, which is gonna splice into the fuel pump signal wire. That will tell the relay to kick on, which will then allow power to flow from the battery, through the relay, and then out through the yellow wire. Think of electricity like water. This is a very common analogy. Think of it like we got water already full inside of this red hose right here. And this relay is kind of like a valve that's turned off. It's like if you had your spigot turned off at your house. And this blue wire is kind of like somebody saying, oh, we're gonna open the spigot. We open the spigot and then water is now finally able to flow from the red hose into the yellow hose and to the fuel pump. That will turn on the fuel pump. And since we have much bigger wires here, we can flow a lot more water or a lot more electricity than with the tiny factory wiring. And lastly, I forgot to mention, there is an inline fuse. As you can see, it's gonna be as close to the battery as possible. The idea here is that if there is a problem with the power wire, the fuse will pop instead of melting the wire, starting a fire, anything weird like that. It's a 25 amp fuse. Now we can go ahead and revisit the instruction manual. The funny part is, once you understand how this works, you can totally make this entire kit out of stuff that you can find at the auto parts store. You can see we have black ground, we have red, power from battery, just like we said, so those two, easy. Ground that one, get power from the battery for this one. Blue, switch to relay, so that just means blue wire to your factory fuel pump signal wire, which you're gonna splice that in. And yellow goes directly to the positive terminal on your fuel pump. That's it, not too bad. I was pretty intimidated by this uh, before I understood it, and I'm, I'm really hoping that this video is gonna help you guys understand it. But anyway, this is what you get in the box. All right, I'm making a big mess over here, but we got the relay, we got the yellow wire, I just drilled a hole in the top hat to fit the wire through. 
I'm gonna Honda bond all around this on both sides before I reinstall this. And then wires connected to the red wire on the fuel pump. I just used spade connectors, put some heat shrink over it. Some people would solder this. Honestly, probably would've made sense for me to just solder it because this hole is too small for me to even pull the spade connector out anyway. If I would've made the hole big enough for the spade connector to come out, would've made sense to use a spade connector, but then I would have a really big hole in my top bat. We're gonna go drop this bad boy back in the car and finish up the rest of the wiring. All right guys, it is completely wired up. I'm gonna show you how I have it set up right now. Uh, I have not tested it yet, so we're gonna do that live here. I have the, the smaller red wire in the positive terminal there, the one closest to me, is the one that goes to the fuel pump. I have it nicely zip tied, running along my other power wire. It goes underneath the breather box and into the cabin. It then goes under the dash, across to the driver's side. It then snakes over the pedals, down alongside. I fed it through the factory wire sheathing. You can see it there. Um, nice and zip tied up back here. So there's that power wire coming into this loom right here. Cool. And then the red wire goes into that loom and then to the relay. I grounded it over there. Uh, this is uh, by the seat belt. It's inside the panel. It comes out right below the seat belt, right there, the seat belt, uh, seat belt mechanism. I have it nicely zip tied and ran with this wiring group right here. <laughs> I'm just making up words now. And then into this loom and to the relay. So black and red are connected to where they're supposed to be, power and ground, and ran to the relay. Yellow, as you can see, drill the hole, ran it into the fuel pump, goes to the red wire, positive wire on the fuel pump. I Honda bond it all around the hole to seal it up. And last wire is the blue wire. You can see it kind of poking out down here. Comes out of the relay and I have it spliced into the uh, white and green wire that was normally plugged in right here. So I simply just snipped that wire. Uh, for example, you could leave it plugged in, doesn't really matter. Snip the white and green wire. You would take this side of it, not the fuel pump side of it. You take this side of it and then solder it to the blue wire. That way upstream is your main relay. When that thing clicks on, it'll send power to the blue wire, turning on the relay, and then allowing power to flow from your battery into the yellow wire and then to the fuel pump. I think this is gonna be good. We're gonna test out right now. Hopefully no fires, hopefully no uh, weird stuff. Let's see if it works. Should hear it prime. I definitely hear it. You can hear that relay turning on even. It runs and it works. Well, that's a huge success. That's something I've been needing to do for probably, ah, since I, since I turboed the car the first time. I honestly think that if you're gonna turbo a car or if you're trying to make any serious power in one of these EGs, all this wiring and all the grounds and everything are so old, it makes sense to just get your fuel pump on its own circuit, obviously aside from the signal, but ground it separately, get power from the battery and use the relay. Definitely the right way to do it. Anyway, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to respond. Also, please click that like and subscribe button. Thank you guys for watching. I know this is not really like one of my big banger videos like I normally post, but I feel like it's a really um, under talked about topic and there isn't much video content on this topic. So figured I'd make my own video, showing you guys how to do it nicely, how to do it properly. I think I did a pretty nice job. You guys can be the judge, let me know. I'm Boosted John, we deserve nothing, earn everything. Also, Boosted John, earn everything merch, and there's a link in the description down below. All right, bye guys.